On July 25th, 2023, the most controversial Five Nights at Freddy's game received a free sequel DLC. After the mixed reception to Security Breach, the series needed a strong return, and luckily Ruin delivered. Ruin's atmosphere is a huge part of the game. The whole pizza plex is destroyed, and almost the entire DLC is bathed in darkness. This is a welcomed change from the overly bright pizza plex in Security Breach. Sure, the pizza plex was beautiful, but it didn't really work for a horror game. Ruin, on the other hand, is almost entirely dark, but the air world keeps up Steelworld's beautiful visuals. There's also a lot of scares throughout the pizza plex to keep you on your toes. While most of these are pretty standard scripted jump scares, they still managed to scare me on my first playthrough. This stupid light in the utility tunnel scared me on three playthroughs. However, I do think the game has way too many cheap jump scares clumped together. In the game's opening, there's jump scare after jump scare after jump scare. And this also happens in the bakery level. I also don't think the main gameplay is very scary outside of these jump scares. The animatronics don't feel threatening at all, and there's very little stress or tension while playing. I think the terror in game should come from the atmosphere and the enemies. That way the terror can still be effective on later playthroughs. Jump scares and atmosphere lose their effect on the player after their first playthrough, since you know where most of them are, while enemies can still remain scary on every playthrough. Overall, I think a majority of the community would agree that this newer atmosphere is far better for a horror game, and it's nice to see Steel Wool learning from Security Breach's criticism. However, I'm hoping in future installments the actual enemies will be scarier. Something I know a lot of the fanbase likes about this DLC is the introduction of Cassie. Cassie is the main protagonist of Ruin, she's Gregory's friend and a huge Fazbear fan. In Security Breach, Gregory was better than a majority of Five Nights at Freddy's protagonists, but he didn't react much to everything going on around him in a realistic way. Cassie, on the other hand, reacts exactly how I would in this situation. She's often terrified by everything happening in the DLC. I'd say she's written way more realistically than Gregory is. Cassie also talks pretty often throughout the DLC, which is great and helps characterize her. Overall, Cassie is a very strong protagonist and my favorite in the series. I'm hoping we get to see even more of her in future games. Cassie is also a huge fan of Roxanne Wolf, a character who returns with a much larger role in this DLC. Like Lamrock Freddy in Security Breach, Roxy serves as an ally in Ruin, albeit with a much smaller role. In the final chapter of Ruin, Cassie has to deactivate Roxy to save Gregory, and it's a pretty heartbreaking scene. Roxy. Cassie. Cassie. Welcome back, Cassie. You remember me? Your special day. I remember. Your special day. Do you still like carrot cake? It has been some time since I saw you last. If I remember correctly, it is on the 11th. I remember because you are number one. Twice. Have you booked your party? I'm sure your friends will show up this time. Cassie? What are you doing? Despite being deactivated, Roxy somehow makes her way down to the sinkhole and saves Cassie from being torn apart by the mimic. Cassie, get out of here! Run! So I guess she wasn't really deactivated. More likely she was rebooted or something like that. Roxy and the mimic can be heard fighting, but we never see if Roxy survives or not. In the elevator ending, Roxy calls out for Cassie, implying she might have survived. Cassie. However, some people think this might actually be the mimic. During Roxy and the Mimic's fight, you can hear Roxy repeating lines from Security Breach. I'm not at the pizza place! Something's trying to trick you! You're a bit late! This thing in the basement sounds just like you! How do I know this is you for real? Is there another option? This might be the Mimic copying Roxy's voice so he can manipulate Cassie in the future. I'm still not sure what I think about this, but considering Roxy's development and redemption in this DLC, I'm sure we'll see more of her in the future. Ruin made me like Roxy a lot more. She was very popular in Security Breach. So making her a bigger focus and giving her somewhat of a redemption arc was a fantastic idea. I'm very excited to see what's next for Roxy. She quickly became one of my favorite characters and I can't wait for her return. This game also has a great main antagonist, the Entity. The Entity is a character in the AR world that appears if you stay there too long. While they can't kill you, they alert the animatronics to your location. Outside of calling the animatronics, they also appear in cutscenes and activate AR inhibitors which prevent you from putting on and taking off the mask. Unlike Vanny and Burntrap, who are hardly in security breach despite being the main villains, the Entity has a lot of screen time and is constantly a threat throughout the DLC, making for a very solid villain. 
It's also very heavily implied and basically confirmed that the entity is part of the Nexus security that's keeping the Mimic trapped. Hence why the security nodes and the entity are both rabbit themed and why the entity pursues you in the AR world. They're trying to stop you from deactivating the Mexus security and freeing the Mimic. This means that the entity isn't really a villain. They're trying to keep the Mimic trapped, but will go to extreme measures to keep people from freeing him. They're very present throughout the DLC, unlike the villains in previous Steelbook games, and I'm hoping the Mimic gets a similar treatment in his next game appearance. Speaking of characters, a majority of the Security Breach cast returns. Almost all of them have ruined variants. They're some of my favorite designs from the series, and it's nice to see the same cast return. I love when FNAF has consistency. So I was overjoyed that the cast of Security Breach has returned multiple times. It makes the story feel consistent. However, their treatment and ruin is kind of lackluster. There's not many segments where they're roaming around. Instead, they're summoned by the entity or featured in cutscenes. And whenever the animatronics do appear, they're incredibly easy to avoid. It's a shame that the animatronics are less of a threat than they were in Security Breach. The worst defender of this is without a doubt the daycare attendant. The daycare attendant isn't really an enemy in Ruin. Despite his cool design and incredible voice acting, he's locked down for most of the daycare mission and can't kill you unless you go out of your way. As someone who was pretty excited for the daycare attendant to return, I was pretty disappointed by their treatment. While their character remained great, they should have been more present in the gameplay. The Moon was a terrifying character in Security Breach, and this was a missed opportunity to have him return as a threat. Some animatronics I think have a strong returner are the Glamrock Endos. The Endos were a terrifying threat in the Endo warehouse in Security Breach, so it's no surprise that they returned in Ruin. After rebooting the daycare attendant as Eclipse, he'll take you out of the daycare where there's a bunch of Endos. You'll have to deactivate three child nodes in the area, but every time you deactivate one of them, an Endo skeleton activates. The Endo's mechanic has remained the same, they can't move while being looked at, making for a pretty terrifying segment as you have to flee the Endos while also making sure they stay put. When I first played this level, it was pretty frustrating. It's a lot of trial and error, figuring out where the security nodes are and what's the best path to them, but it's overall a very well designed gameplay segment. Another cool segment in Ruin is the Monty Sewer mission. On your way to Roxy Raceway, you travel into the sewers and Monty appears. Monty leaps into the water and you have to jump across the breeze to avoid falling into the water and alerting Monty. This segment is pretty short and not too difficult, but it's pretty unique and fairly well designed. Montgomery Gator swimming in the water is also a neat way to connect to the animal he's based on. The segment ends with an electrical panel powering a Glamrock body sign in the water. This electrocutes the water and seemingly kills Monty. I think this is a pretty cool death for Monty and was incredibly shocking when I first played the DLC. But I think this scene is lacking some music that would have made it a lot more cool. <sighs> I like this segment a lot, it's not very difficult, but I think it's pretty interesting and a great break from deactivating security nodes. Some other characters who get a gameplay segment are the Music Men. In Security Breach, the mini Music Men were a very boring vent enemy. They are pretty much just a smaller Music Man but with withering. In Ruin, however, they returned with some great improvements. In Bonnie Bowl, there are tons of mini Music Men guarding the security nodes. There's such an absurd amount of them and I find it kind of funny. The mini Music Men's designs have also improved. Like the rest of the ruined characters, they're damaged, but they have different head and body variants that have some cool designs. The Sun and Rabbit Music Men are some of my favorite variants. As someone who hated the mini Music Men in Security Breach, I was surprised that I liked them so much in Ruin. Their gameplay segment is very well designed. It's mostly trial and error, trying to figure out where to lure the mini Music Men to and how to sneak past them. Once you get the hang of this, it's a breeze, but I remember getting stuck here for 30 minutes or so in my first playthrough. Something I noticed while playing on the PS4 port of this game is that there's way less Music Men, likely for optimization. Despite how much I liked the mini Music Men, I was disappointed that DJ Music Man didn't return in Ruin. His gameplay segment in Security Breach was fantastic, and he's a very beloved character. So it was really surprising that he didn't return in Ruin. Luckily he returns in Help Wanted 2 with a damaged form. But I'm still disappointed we didn't get to see him in Ruin. To keep this video short, that's all I'll be covering for part 1 of this review. Be sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss part 2. Thanks for watching this video. If you did enjoy this, please like and subscribe, and consider donating to our Ko-Fi. Our Ko-Fi is linked in the description and helps us fund future videos and projects. Thanks for watching, and remember, avoid sewer gators.